Hey everyone, so this is the uh, second part of our screencasting on gene expression. So we're going to take you through the second part of that, that being translation. And uh, you can see from this next slide that the second half of gene expression, so we've already gone from DNA uh, to RNA. Okay, that all occurred here. DNA to RNA through the process called transcription. This occurred in the nucleus, obviously, because DNA is stored in the nucleus. It never leaves a nucleus. <clears throat> now we're going to pick it up from the second part, and we're going to move from RNA to proteins. And proteins are really the end goal of gene expression. We're trying to make gene, uh, pr proteins, but to do that, we first have to go to RNA, and then for the second half, we once we have that RNA, we can actually go to proteins and make these uh, quintessential structures of the cell. Proteins do every every function of the cell, right? So they're the doers of the cell. Uh, they are enzymes. They are transport proteins. They are receptor proteins. So they actually achieve a lot of the, the functions that the cell is capable of achieving. So uh, really, the whole point of gene expression is to make these proteins. Okay, so this is the second half of that. Um, you know the details already. Basically, you get this messenger RNA that comes out of the nucleus through one of these nuclear pores and into the cytoplasm. So translation occurs in the cytoplasm. Now, this picture is showing you, basically, you have this messenger RNA transcript. And the first thing you have to do with it is break it up into what are called codons. Codons are these three-letter um, sequences of RNA. So you can see here we've broken this one up into this codon, this one is broken up into this codon, this one is broken up into this codon, and so forth. And then through the process of translation, we're going to create uh, a polypeptide. This is also, you can also call this a protein, I don't mind that, polypeptide protein, whatever. But each of these individual, this is a blue amino acid, this is a pink amino acid, this is a green amino acid, this is a yellow one. So these codons are going to specify various amino acids on a certain place, certain order on this protein. So this is number two, this is number three, this is number four. Okay, very important part of gene expression, very important part uh, of being a cell, making proteins for the cell to do these various functions. So how does this work? Well, you're all familiar with the genetic code table. Uh, this is the circular genetic code table. I like it a lot better than the square one that your book gives you, so I will provide this for you. And you'll actually be able to read it, right? So in this case, you can actually see this amino acid glycine. I know that uh, the sheets I've given you so far have not been very clear because I've blown them up so much. So special shout out, I guess, to Katie for letting me know pretty much every day that, that, that she can't read that thing. And there's a lot of you, too, that let me know and, and tell me uh, on your quizzes and whatnot that you can't read those things. So I'll make you a better table. Okay, for the time being, this is how you use this. Let's say, for example, you have the codon AUC. Okay, so in your messenger RNA, you have this three-letter codon. How do you use this for this table? Well, the first thing you do is you start in this center structure right here. So here you get the larger letters, and this is where you're going to start. This first letter, A in this case, is right here. So really you know that you're going to just stay in this quadrant right here because we've identified A as the first letter of this codon. You go and you see the second letter is U. So then you find the U. Well, here's the U. So it's on this next layer, this next outer layer. It's a little bit smaller than that first layer. You find your U. So now we're down to a possibility of having methionine or isoleucine as our amino acid. You go and you see that you have a C here as the third letter in your codon. So you find the C, and here's the C right here. And lo and behold, it's in the isoleucine area. So this codon, AUC, specifies for the amino acid isoleucine. Okay? There are a number of amino acids on this table, right? So you can literally go through and see the various amino acids. They're on the outermost layers. So there's phenylalanine, leucine, serine, tyrosine, uh, another spot for leucine. Boy, leucine must be pretty important. 
uh, proline, histidine. Okay, so this is how you use the genetic code table. I should also mention that there are special codons called start and stop codons. I'm going to go ahead and circle methionine and tell you that this is the start codon. And there's only one sequence for that, so A U G equals methionine, and that's the start codon. So you always see methionine at the beginning of a protein sequence, guys. Okay, moving to the next slide. A little more detail on some of these special codons. Uh, stop codons are another special circumstance. Uh, stop codons basically indicate the part, and I'm gonna try to get rid of that little thing that's blinking. Looks like it's gone, and it's back, great. Uh, stop codons, so stop codons do not specify any particular amino acid. Stop codons essentially act as punctuation for a sentence. So you know like in a sentence when you see a period that ends the sentence? Well, stop, stop codons do essentially the same thing. They're not adding any extra words. They're telling you that the sentence has basically ended. There are three stop codons in our genetic code. Uh, you can see here UAA A is one, UAG is one, and UG a is one. So there are three different ways to stop a sentence. You can kind of see that as a, um, a period, a question mark, and an exclamation point perhaps. But they definitely end the end of an RNA. So they, bas they basically end production of a protein. They do not add one. So let me repeat that. For instance, if you get 12 codons in your messenger RNA sequence, chances are you're only going to get 11 amino acids. That is because that last stop codon does not specify an amino acid, so you don't get an amino acid from that. So that's another special circumstance of this genetic code table. So let's practice this. Let's put this together. Uh, I'm going to include a bonus round of transcription for you. So I'm giving you the DNA sequence here. And uh, I want you to make the RNA, messen the messenger RNA from this DNA uh, sequence. So let me run through this with you. Uh, again, you can go through straight through this messenger RNA sequence and just put the complementary letter, right? So you can put A, you can put U, you can put G. For those of you that are struggling and for those of you that have a hard time keeping track of letters, uh, keeping track of order of letters, maybe you flip letters around, maybe you have a hard time with with reading certain letters and putting certain letters, that's okay. You can still do this and still get a correct um, messenger RNA transcript. Let me show you a little trick to do that. You just handle each nucleotide independently. So for example, for the A's, you go through and you find all the A's and you put U's. Okay, there's nothing wrong with doing that. You can go through and do each letter first. This way you don't get kind of caught up. For each C, you would put a G. Okay, for each G, you'd put a C. And then for each T, you would put an A. <laughs> Didn't leave space in some of these things. So you can see how easy it is for it to get messy. And this pen is not the, the most accurate in the wor world, but uh, that's OK. Okay, so I, I have here outlined the messenger RNA that we just made. So this is your DNA template shown here. This, starting from here over, is your messenger RNA. You use your messenger RNA to make amino acids using that genetic code table. So again, you break up this messenger RNA into codons. So I've kind of put some spaces in here for you to do that makes it a little easier to see. So pause this video and go through and use your genetic code table 
to translate these codons into amino acids. So do yourself a favor and actually stop it and actually do the work. And uh, when you come back, we'll give you the answers. Make sure you did it right. Okay, so what did we get here? Let me give you the answers here. This is methionine. This is leucine. I'm putting just the abbreviations here. This is proline. This is tyrosine. This is glycine. Uh, let's see here. Serine. Tyrosine again. Phenylalanine. Histidine. Arginine. Leucine. And stop. So you don't add an amino acid there. Okay, so you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve codons with eleven amino acids in the protein. Okay, so this is the general outline on how to do translation. It's very basic. Uh, in the next screencast, we're going to actually go into the details of how the process is done cellularly. So I wanted to introduce you to this cellular machinery that actually does this translation. So this is the overall process. This is how it's done. But there are some cellular, um, key cellular players involved, some cellular structures that actually do the translating. And so we'll walk through that in the next screencast. I hope this helped. Take care, guys.